Well, these are the sad updated data voting counts as they come in. I was going to drive up there for what seemed to be a raucous and crowded ballroom for the Ossoff campaign. But folks, I got to be honest with you. I am a Democrat who is not in the mode of recording a loss. And it looks like this is shaping up that way. There, I mean, it could turn, but look, prior to this point in the race, okay, Ossoff, it was a seesaw battle. Start off with Handel, then Ossoff, then Handel, then Ossoff. Now it's Handel, but the difference is that she is at 94,737. He is at 85,431. Uh, there's, they are not saying how what the percentage is in here, but if you look here, it's 99 out of 208, and uh, the bottom line is that it's not barring an enormous wave of let's say 9,000 votes that swing to put him ahead of her. I'm just not seeing him dig out of this. And that's too bad. That's really uh, uh, sad, sad for the people that campaign hard. But it's also, you know, I just thought about it. It's a rainy day, and rainy days have had a tendency to work against Democratic candidates of late in off-year elections. Because for whatever reason, we're just not as motivated to get out and vote, right? But the epicenter of it all for the Ossoff campaign is an hour's drive from here and it's a driving rainstorm I don't quite know my way around the region you know so I kind of put it all together and thought you know not a good idea not a good idea you got flash flood warnings around here and everything else it wasn't you know I should have went up there earlier in the day when it wasn't rain. I should have went up there but I just you know the bottom line is I'm tired of being in a room where we're losing. I've, that was last year. I like the good old days when we were in the room with the Obama campaign and we were winning, you know? When we were truly making America great again. This doesn't feel good. Now again, things could change. And I'm refreshing the results here and I'm not seeing it. It's, it's, it's Ossoff right here, okay? Ossoff 47. 0.42 Handel, uh, 52.58, and again, 94,737, you know, in, and then 85,431. Now, if you want a detail of what's happening, click the context. This is the state of Georgia's information site, okay? Click on that. There's the whole state of Georgia, all right? Hey, how you doing, Jamal? Look at this right there bam see Handel look at that she is kicking his tail in Cobb County and Cobb County is much larger than Gwinnett County all right see that now look at what look watch what happens when I go yeah watch what happens when I do this Ding. all right DeKalb all right see Ossoff is not kicking He's winning, but he's not kicking her tail in a smaller area. So you don't have to be a genius to say, hey, you know what? That doesn't look good. But like I say, anything can happen because all I know is what's come in and what's projected. I don't know what else is out there, all right? But I also know that this total, oh, here got another update. Hold on a second. There we go, all right? So we still have 52, 58, 47, 42, and uh, yeah, it's still not looking good. 94,737, 85, 431, still has that stubborn precincts complete thing, all right? Like the county is complete, but it's just not looking like he's going to pull it out. Like I said, when he was behind, 
By a thousand votes, it was anybody's race. Of course, when she was ahead by a thousand votes, it was anybody's race. But is this a referendum on the Trump presidency? Yeah, it still is, but it's also a referendum on the Democratic Party because we're not getting out that magic message that's, and we're not having the magic candidates that are the Obama types that are swinging it. You know, John Ossoff had a lot going for him, has a lot going for him. Let's not take that away from him. They really hammered him on the whole thing about him not living in the district because, okay, his parents live in the district, but he moved outside of the district to help his girlfriend through med school so they get an apartment, right? Then he turned around and ran and man, he emerged. So it's like, dude, and his reasons for noble, without question, but the bottom line is it became an issue that was brought up again and again and again. You're not an outsider, you're not us, you're not an outsider, which is complete BS. His parents live in the district, right? But still, all right, man. But I didn't want to go there and just be on a live stream and then people don't want to talk to you and all that and then not only that it takes an hour to get up there an hour to get back if i left now 9 45 wouldn't get there until 10 40 the race would be called by then then i have to drive back that's 11 40 so or midnight and i'll you know and not only that i'd have to stay up there and get video you know vlogs right so nah it ain't happening all right so i'm disappointed now, um, yeah, the difference is nine, the 66% and the difference is 9,306 votes uh, right now. 94,737 94, to 85,431. Yeah, I'm disappointed. So anyway, let me see what the rest of you guys are. I haven't actually fired up the watch page or anything. I'm going to go over to YouTube and see what's happening. Disappointing night. I mean, it's one race, you know, right? It's one race. So Steve Karnacki is going through his little, let's see what he's got to say here. What you got to say? You say what I'm saying, right? This is a Republican bastion. Yep. Karen Handel now getting close to 60% of the vote out of Cobb. Cobb is now reflecting about the overall share of the vote in this district and the returns we're seeing that it should. And you see the result. Karen Handel now jumping out to a pretty solid lead. She's also just the votes that are cast today on Election Day. She's getting 58% of the votes that were cast on Election Day. Hmm. She lost. The uh, pre-election day vote, the early vote, she only lost it by 1.4 points. This is a number Democrats thought they could get much higher. They did anticipate Handel doing well today. Handel is doing well today, but she did much better in the early vote than was expected. All right, and uh, Steve, with this, uh, we got 66% of the vote in right now. We're looking at about 10,000 vote lead for Handel. Do we know more about what's still expected to come in? Yeah, here's the bottom line. It's pretty spread out evenly, and as I said, the same-day vote, Karen Handel's winning at a clip of about 58% right now, so you can expect the same-day vote that's still out there. She's probably going to continue to lead it. Maybe the margin comes down a little. She's going to get more votes probably out of the same day. The only thing, if you're a Democrat, you have to latch on to right now is the mail-in vote. Nothing from the mail ballots has been counted yet, but i got to tell you, just some quick math here from the preliminary 65, I can't read there, 6,500 mail-in votes were cast total in the preliminary. Of those, John Ossoff got 76%. What did that translate into? He got about 5,000 votes. His opponents about 1,500. Now, if you have higher turnout here in the general election, if that 6,500 went up to 10,000, he might yeah. net 5,000 right. votes out of that. So if he nets up 5,000 right. out of the mail-in, he's down 10,000 now. Right. He has an advantage in the same day. It still doesn't, it yeah, doesn't look good. Minutes. Steve Karnacki, we'll be checking in with you as we get in more so, of this vote again. This there it is, folks. Election. I mean, uh, we got here congressional district in Georgia, because Ossoff did Handel. not clear. Uh, nothing else. We are getting a uh, real-time result for what it means when more money. Yeah, we we got a, um, well, what I was going to say is, yeah, I'm disappointed, all right? I want to I wanted win. And, uh... Yeah, Jamal, uh, Fulton County's got out their votes. Um, yeah, it sucks, you know. I'm sorry, it just sucks. It just sucks. But 
because once again, you know, it proves that we had the magic candidate in Barack. But it also proves that we just don't, other than Barack, we don't, just don't have him. And I'm going to double down on this. As a party, we have to have a come to Jesus moment about our message. Let me give you Oakland as an example, all right? Because in Oakland right now, as I speak to you, the Oakland City Council is taking up this idea of a Department of Violence Prevention that has been floated by three council members, Lynette Gibson, Gibson McElhaney, Larry Reed, and Rebecca Kaplan, okay? District 3, District 7, and at large, respectively. Uh, this is, the idea is that this is opposed to, you know, uh, somehow, um, in some kind of way, do away with the violence and, and make, you know, make things better and all that, right? And it doesn't, okay? It really, it doesn't, all right? It, 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 it doesn't solve Oakland's root problem. Oakland's root problem is income inequality. Income inequality causes violence. If you try to tell them that, that it, it goes through one ear and out the other. In Oakland, among the adult Oakland population, the Oaklanders, one out of every 100 persons is homeless. That is a record. One out of every 100. So what does it have to be? One out of every two? Excuse me, two out of every 100? Three, four, five? Can it try for 10? I mean, how high does it have to be? All of this is happening under an entirely democratic watch, okay? I don't care, I don't call myself a progressive for the reasons I'm giving you, I'm about to tell you, all right? Because we, all right, Oh, and by the way, whoever keeps thumbing this down, fuck you. Uh, not only that, um, um, we, as a group, as a people, do not, we don't seem to really want to address the root causes of homelessness. For example, in Oakland, if you have a problem, you go to the Oakland Rent Board, all right? And, and you know, I think this is a good comment by uh, Isabel right here. It says, uh, I like this. I like this comment. I'm going to read it. It says, uh, uh, most of the, hey, Dorian, how you doing? It says, most of the homeless are some of the happiest people, no violence needed. You know, that's true. In fact, and, uh, and, and Dorian said, violence will always be a part of life. The best we can do is deal with it. The best we can but I was telling the council member hey or saying to her hey you know income inequality causes violence study after study proves it but she won't listen she says that every city has problems with income inequality and racism she's acting like these factors are not even at all um, now handles at 100,000 Versus Osos 89635. So now this this is not looking good, man. 53% of the 53% she's got 47 him. 69% in. Yeah, that would have been the drive to hell. I don't want to be in a ballroom where people are just crying. Because I would I would have been one of them. And I don't I mean as and I'm already pissed off as it is, as you can tell, okay? So anyway, my point is that we as a party don't get that. It's about jobs and income. We want to do everything to make it look like we're solving the problem. Oakland has an entirely democratic political base. And yet we have an income inequality problem and a giant homeless problem problem at levels we've never had. And that's true for the state of California. So how can we as a party claim that we're better than the Republicans? Okay? When we were beaten by a guy and we were beaten by a number of Republicans who talk about jobs and who talk about making sure that jobs are generated. I don't mean tech jobs. I mean low-skilled, well-paying jobs, okay? There's something there. I'm sorry, there is something there. If I'm still considering this idea about raising money from Mayor Volcker, but well, my point would be jobs, jobs, jobs. My point would be to send the message that no other Democrat has sent, okay? Because we've had Democrats in power 
that have taken jobs away. I'm as much as I may not like what Clark County Commissioner Steve Seselak is doing with respect to the Raiders in the stadium. The man will make a great governor because he and I have talked. He gets what it means to be an old style Democrat where you're focused on jobs. You know, put money in the pockets of people and you will make them happy. It's a simple equation. All right. Dorian says, I agree, Zane, the homeless issue here in Orange County is also getting really bad. Yeah. I mean, in an estate, California, ran by a guy who is Democratic royalty, ran by two senators who are Democrats. We got a pipeline of people running for governor who are Democrat, including my friend, longtime friend Gavin Newsom, who I will work for. I mean, you know, it's campaign for. And yet, we have these problems. And we're getting our ass kicked at the at you know in the elections. Overall. When we when we go up against Republican candidates, why? It, it's not hard to figure out because our message sucks. It just plain sucks. You know, we wanna talk about hoity toity and all this stuff and, and you know, hey look, civil rights is not a discussion. Civil rights is a given, but we have to make absolutely certain that we are making sure that while we're giving people the civil rights that they unquestionably deserve, we are also allowing them to have the means to enjoy the kind of life they want. And we are not doing that. We are not doing that. In this race, John Ossoff talked about high tech he talked about education. He talked about, you know, lower taxes. He he said that both parties spend too much. Fine. But he didn't say the magic word. Jobs. I know you're suffering. And I will make sure there are more jobs for you than any predecessor, particularly Republican. I'd have hit him right between the freaking nose. And that's the other thing. They were too nice. By contrast, well, here's the other thing that burns me up about the Democrats. My party. I'm a Democrat, all right? We still don't have our social media act together. We got our ass kicked in the last election, okay? Uh, thanks, Jamal. I appreciate it. We got our ass kicked in the last election. I mean straight up ass kicked by social media, okay? And, um, and, and uh, I think... Vito was saying some people act like uh, they deserve more pay than the amount of work put in. Well, you know, okay, fine. That's whatever. That's beside the point. The point of the matter is that's an individual thing, all right? Some people work hard and they will never get the pay they reserve. They deserve, all right? Ask women. With all the women that basically take far less money than men for the same job. Mainly because women are not tuned to ask for what they want and should deserve. Because we don't train women to be that way. Okay? So, you know, we, but that doesn't make it right. But my point is, that's beside the point. My point is, if you don't have jobs that pay well, it doesn't matter how much one person is getting or the other. Because the job is not there. You got to make sure the job is there. <laughs> All right. I mean, I am really exercised about this. And uh, this handle I can't pronounce is, but how about seeking ways to get maximum pay instead of worrying about the minimum wage? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about production of jobs. You didn't hear what I said, okay? I'm talking about the production of jobs. If the job isn't there to begin with, you and I cannot debate the wage level, you know why? Because the job ain't there. And the problem, you hear what I'm saying? The problem is that we have not. At all. At all. I mean at all. Focused on getting jobs. If John Ossoff had made himself the jobs candidate, he'd have won. He didn't do that. I listened to all his commercials. Meanwhile, Kevin Handel and her people, they're out... Even telling black folks, 
Oh, you're a slave to the Democratic Party, yada, yada, yada. You know, you should be voting Republican. Yeah, what? Excuse me, they didn't say those. They, they, they almost said that. They might as well have said that, okay? So, yeah. I mean, wow. So there it is, okay? So, I mean, it looks like they're getting ready to call it. Uh, I'll be back later with another live stream, but right now, this is what it's looking like, okay? John Ossoff did, wait, wait, John Ossoff did top 100,000 votes. He's at 104. 316, but Handel is at 114.790. Okay. Um, now it's 80% in. She's 52, he's 48. She's pulling away. Okay. So 80% in. And I think this is about ready to be called. There, this is a, a chicken that uh, this chicken is about done, I think. That's too bad, man. Let's go back and see something here. As we click on the contest details map here, right there, and we get the whole state of Georgia presents for you right there. There's the whole state. And we look at Cobb County right there, all right? There you go. Karen Houndale beat his butt in Cobb County, 61 to 6107 to 3893. We go over here to decal to decal right and look at that okay Ossoff still held his lead but he didn't improve on it and it's a smaller county all right so there we go now we got what you got to say you got uh dorian says um won't cost of living go up if max pay is given i agree with zinni more jobs need to be provided with fair pay according to the job. Well, yeah, all I'm saying, I'm saying more than that. I'm saying you've got to have the business to begin with, all right? Now, and the whole minimum wage discussion to me is incomplete because as a person who runs a business, I'm happy to pay more when I can afford to do so. But how, if I have a bricks and mortar business in California, I, in particular, in Oakland especially, I've got one problem. I've got my business owner raising the rent on me, okay? At the same time, I've got the government raising the minimum wage on me, okay? And I'm getting squeezed in the middle, all right? So I don't have anybody providing relief for me. Where's the relief? What I mean by that is, how about rental assistance so that I can afford to pay the rent, right? At the same time, I have the higher wage cost, which allows my business to stay in stay in existence. Because what'll happen is that, hey, look, without assistance programs, what you'll get are mom and pops being replaced by chains. But the problem with that is that if you want to start your own business, it's harder for you to do so because you're gonna to need to pay a higher level of rent just to afford that space that maybe 10 years ago your friend used for their hairdresser shop or their bar and nightclub where their other friends performed because they had a band, they made some money on the side that allowed them to buy clothes or maybe send their kids to college. You see what I'm getting at? All of that goes away when you lose the opportunity to start your own business in your city. That's what I'm talking about. A uh, person with a handle I uh, don't un understand says, I do believe you about the jobs. People want to max pay with no skill. I don't agree with it. I don't care. That's a side discussion. That's got nothing to do with nothing. That's individual. You know? I can say, hey, look, 66% of businesses fail because of bad management. You cannot legislate great management. You just can't. You can, what you can do is incentivize people to start and maintain businesses. That's what I'm talking about. But if a person has no incentive to start a business, let alone maintain one, all this other side conversation about oh, how much somebody's getting paid versus somebody else, goes away. You know why? Because there ain't no job to argue about. 
It's ridiculous. Man. Oh. It's ridiculous. Jamal says that's why I do drop shipping. What do you mean by that, Jamal? I'm, you're, I'm, you're missing me. Um, um, hey, Barry, how you doing? Um, wow. Tell you what. Um, they are. He's at Ossoff headquarters. The place is crowded, but it's subdued. And I so don't want to be in that room right now. I mean, it's rocking. It's you know cool to meet the dims and everything, which I haven't yet done. You know. But, uh, wow. I'm going to get more involved. I was, I'm, I was mad at the party. Just mad at the party. Because I, they shut me out of the Democratic National Convention. And uh, they shut me out of the convention. Because there were some Clinton people that didn't like that I helped Obama. All right? And uh, hold on a second. Let's see what Kornacki is, is, is telling. Is, uh... Oh, I see you work with another printer. Per... Hey, hold on that, that thought. Hold on. Well, I think all the attention Democratic activists pay. And the general advantage we've seen Democrats tend to have in early voting here and elsewhere. Well, today in the early vote, John Ossoff did win the early vote. He won it by 1.4%. The early vote, the in-person early vote. Uh, he wanted to be well north of 50% there because in the same day vote, the people actually turning out and voting today, it looks like Karen Handel, uh, well over 55% of those. And that's the other key here. It's right here, Cobb County. This is the Republican part of the district. This is the core Republican part of the district. Not much of an early vote there to speak of, but a very big same day vote overwhelmingly for Karen Handel. So Democrats did not get what they wanted out of the early how can you take one district and give these national implications? So CNN is projecting Karen Handel. Like I said, no surprise there. That's sad. That sucks. All right, folks, I'll be back later. Oh, I'm, I'm, I gotta take a, I gotta take a, I gotta take a gym break or something. I'm glad I didn't drive up there because I would have driven up there. And by the time I got there, eh. anyway, Handel wins in Georgia. There's the answer to your question. I'll see you guys later tonight.